made it back from holiday safely so that's good um and I wanted to talk a bit about object permanence today because that's a thing I think I struggle with and I don't know that much about it in terms of it as an autistic behaviour um, or something that one struggles with um, and it's not something I've thought about much until I got my autism diagnosis and I was chatting with somebody at work and um, they have pretty extreme object permanence issues as well um, and I can't remember if I've mentioned before but he and I actually work really well together as long as at least one of us is having a good day because we like things laid out in a similar way and we think quite similarly which means that as a lot of things can be communicated um, with very very minimal effort um, I think in a way that possibly might even look like telepathy to people who don't think in the same way as us I'm sure most people have got that experience with a few of their friends um, and one of the things that we both struggle with is this object permanence concept and one of the ways that manifests we work as carers together and we go in to give somebody personal care which for those of you who don't work in the care industry basically means help someone have a wash get dressed and um, deal with their continence needs um, which often involves giving somebody a fresh continence pad um, so we walk into the room greet the resident um, all the rest of that stuff but then we lay out everything that we are going to need and we lay it out in a very specific way where both of us can see everything and that's great because as soon as one of us can't see it that one of us will say where's such and such oh no did we forget to bring in such and such and the other person will go oh no I can't remember where it is even if it's right in front of us it's like the other person's lack of object permanence that the blindness mind blindness to whatever I don't know becomes contagious and suddenly neither of us can see it and then one of us goes oh, it's right there both of us have times when it's oh don't be silly it's there or like um we use mechanical devices to help people in and out of bed uh, called hoists um we'd left hadn't brought one into the ladies room and the guy's working with he was having a moment um and i went it's just outside we didn't bring it in um and same sometimes happens the other way it'll be out of sight for both of us but he'll know where where we've left a pad or a towel or something um so yeah so i hadn't really thought about this as being something that i do differently to other people i was kind of aware of it um i guess i put it in the same category as, as putting your keys in the fridge and stuff that everyone does sometimes when they're a bit stressed and i do it slightly more than most people because i have fibromyalgia which gives you brain fog issues fibro fog um and the fibro fog is something that i've dealt with as long as I can remember um, and I guess I just put my object permanence issues into the same category as that as just just another symptom of brain fog um, it does seem to be exacerbated by stress or maybe when I'm under less stress I'm better able to mask the uh, issues I have it's probably more accurate so that's been quite interesting and I kind of want to learn more about it and I've done very brief bit of reading and one of the things it talked about is the way that this doesn't just apply to objects we call it object permanence but it's it's also um, the awareness that people still exist when they're not near you and actually that's that's fine I'm aware of that but also that people's good regard of you still exists when you are not around them and this was an eye-opener to me because if if I don't hear from you and you're one of my close friends one of my my family family one of my inner circle I guess I know I trust I just I just am aware that you still love me I don't need that from you all the time although oddly enough my husband I 
do need him to tell me that he loves me all the time because I feel like if he's not telling me he loves me then then that it, it's like it's gone away um, and that's not something that's easy to explain and I was always a bit <sighs> felt awkward because it makes me seem like that super clingy insecure person that nobody really wants to be um, and now that I understand what's behind it it's a lot more comfortable for me to say to him actually I do need you to say it right now um, but yeah if I drift away from a friend sometimes I drift away because I start to think well actually they probably don't like me they probably just put up with me because I hung out with the same people as them and I think this is the university friends that I drifted away from I would say that's probably what's happened with all of them is I've made this assumption that we were never that close really that even if we were that close they probably don't want to hear from me anymore um, and it's weird to think of that as an object permanence issue this is this is a self-esteem thing surely but it becomes more obviously object permanence when it comes to my job because um, again I have two jobs and in one of them I feel pretty secure and I'm 80% of the time walking confident calm knowing that the staff around me trust me um, trust me to know what I'm doing have have good you know hold me in, in high regard that my students this is where I teach aerial circus that my students trust me and like me and want to learn from me um, and it probably helps I've been doing it for eight years um, but it's a great way for me to relieve my stress and that I don't really know I don't know beyond that where the difference is because my other job is so high stress um, and I leave one shift and come back in the next morning and overnight assume that everything good I did yesterday has been forgotten by everybody that everyone only sees the bad in what I do they only ever see when I fail um, that even when I succeed they see it as a failure that management hate me that that staff members that I really like working with just tolerate me and put up with me even if they tell me good things I forget very quickly or I don't believe the sincerity of it very quickly I stop believing the sincerity of it and I never occurred to me that this could be linked to object permanence and yet when I was reading about object permanence and autism this this was coming up almost exactly that somebody had written about with a job and that feels really crazy to me. So I try now to go into the other job remembering that my colleagues do think, I'm not a waste of space, that they do think I'm worthwhile, that I am good at my job, that the people I'm caring for want me there. And when I stop feeling that way I try to remind myself that this is probably my brain losing that pattern as it were yeah I'm definitely going to do some more digging into object permanence and autism I'm going to see how much I can understand on it like and also try try and understand how much of my experiences with it are to do with object permanence and, and where the line is with it being something else and it's just another area which makes me wonder how much of the fibro fog is fibro fog and not linked with some kind of meltdown shutdown situation because that's something else I'm going to research I think there's a link between at least my experience of meltdown and fibro fog and I don't know if that's a common thing but I do know fibromyalgia is more common if you're autistic and that's something else I'll talk about at some point hmm. yeah 
All right. Take care, everyone. Bye.